works is it allows you some functionality to make your page somewhat interactive so that your page can respond to things that the user does. That's it in a nutshell. I mean, of course, there, you could find exceptions to that and so on, but that's mostly what JavaScript is used for. To allow some programming functionality on your page, to make your page interactive, and to make it interactive without having to go back to the server. All right? Because if you remember in our diagram, which I think I have up here, the amount of time for a client to request something, for it to make it through to the internet, and to come back is long compared to the amount of time that it would take just to run code that was already downloaded to the browser. So when you request a web page that uses JavaScript, you get in addition to the HTML and CSS, you get some JavaScript. That JavaScript then is executed virtually immediately on the client. It doesn't have to go through the process of downloading anything from the server because that's already been downloaded from the server. So when you do a mouse over effect, um, it can happen immediately and it can happen without having to go back to the web server. The example that we went over last time um, was to do uh, an effect really similar to what you see on this page. Or we'll, I'll bring it up in a minute here, the page that I mean. We looked um, at ESPN's website, and we noticed how they have mouse over menus. So that if you put your mouse over one of these things, a submenu appears. Notice that happens virtually instantaneously. Even on a quick internet connection, um, if it had to go back to the server to get that, you might load, notice a little bit of pause, and, and your experience as a user wouldn't nearly be as good. It wouldn't be as seamless. So there's a pieces of code that are sent down that show and hide those various menus. The HTML for those menus is there all along. It's just a matter of being shown and hidden. All right? And the JavaScript is what does the showing and the hiding of it. Um, so. The menu for NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, NCAA football, all those menus have been downloaded with the HTML, with the initial HTML. You simply don't see them. And as you put your mouse over these, there's snippets of JavaScript that say, find this menu and display it. And as you take your mouse out of it, find that menu and hide it again. That's really not so much different than what we did in this example which was to show and hide spoilers. We have a show spoiler link. We put our mouse over it. It shows it. We take our mouse off. We hide it. We also have a different way to show and hide the stuff on the page. We look at the code that does this, you'll see that anything with a class of spoiler whoops, is hidden initially. We set that property up in CSS. And this is what we're going to see over and over and over again. We're going to see properties that we define in CSS for sort of the initial load of the page. So initially, right off the bat, 
we're going to make those spoilers invisible. And we can do that by saying visibility of hidden. All right, we can do that in the CSS. It's important to note how, these, how the three languages that we use here interact with each other. HTML is the content. What is the content of the page? Well, each of the paragraphs, including the spoilers. All right. What do we do with the CSS? Well, we make the font size bigger for the, um, for the um, paragraph. And we make the spoilers initially hidden. Then we have the interactive piece, that when we put our mouse on the link or when we click the button, it either shows or hides um, the stuff. We do that via these things, which are events that represent the main things that you can interact with the page uh, by. So on mouse over, we have document, get element by ID, spoiler, style, visibility, hidden. All right. Or, I'm sorry, visibility visible. That's when we put our mouse on this link. And as we take our mouse off that link, we make it disappear again. Let's look closer at these two instructions. I'm actually going to paste them in a new document so we can look just at them. Actually, I'm just going to paste this whole statement in a new document so we can look just at it. Oops. So we have what we typically have. We have a link which has a starting link and an ending link tag. The link in this case simply goes to the page uh, the top of the page. That's what pound sign means. On mouse over and on mouse out are the two events that are important here. Again, those events are, have been defined for us. All right? We can invent new ways that the user can interact with the page. Users interact with the page in predictable ways. They put their mouse on something, they click on something, they type something in. They move their mouse. All those things are examples of actions that the user can take. The idea of interactivity is we write some code for that. Now, a few things we're going to point out. I pointed them out last time, but I'm going to review them this time. Is notice that our entire JavaScript statement is included in, included in the double quotes. All right? So this on mouse over event is like any other HTML attribute. Right? An HTML attribute, as we defined earlier in the semester, is any additional information we have about the HTML tag. For example, href equals quote, pound sign quote. That's an attribute. Well, on mouse over is also an attribute. And it's on mouse over, quote, some stuff, and then a quote. Now, in the case of the events, that stuff is going to be JavaScript. So, document get element by ID spoiler one says, find the thing on the page that has an ID of spoiler1. We're very frequently going to be using IDs with JavaScript, because typically the idea is that we want to point to something on the page and we want to change it. All right? So how do you point to something specific on a page? You use an ID. Um, a lot of students seem sometimes to be confused about IDs. IDs is, is just a way to identify a certain piece of the page, certain tag on the page. So when we create our HTML, we give IDs to some of the things on the page. All right? And we do that for a variety of reasons. When we did HTML forms, we used that ID to link the form control with the label. All right? We've used IDs for style, all right, to put, set a style for a particular ID on the page. All right? And in JavaScript, we're going to use them a lot because we want to point to something specific on the page and make some sort of change to it. What changes do we want to make? We either want to change the CSS that's applied to it, or we want to change the HTML associated with it. Anything that you can type in and you can initially set on your page, whether it be an HTML attribute, 
or a style attribute, you can change via CSS. All you have to do is point to it and change it. So in this case, we point to the thing that has an ID of spoiler1. Now notice a couple things. The word spoiler1 is the name of a specific ID. It's not the name of a command. All right. Therefore, it must be in quotes. Because we already are using double quotes to indicate the beginning and ending of this statement, we use single quotes for the ID within the double quotes. All right. So here we're pointing to that ID on the page. What do we want to change about it? We want to change its style. What do we want to do with the style? We want to change its visibility. And what do we want to send the visibility to? We want to make it visible. So visible also notice is in, is in single quotes because, again, that's a specific value. That's not part of the command. Likewise, we have the exact same thing except we make the, um, the page uh, invisible. Or not the page, but the, the section of the page invisible. Yes? Do you mean things like on mouse over? Or? Yeah, like for example, like that, there's like, there are a lot of those? Yeah, well, um, a lot, there's, there's probably a dozen, 15, 20. Some so, many, well, again, keep in mind, I, I'm not 100% sure if you're asking, like, what are the different events or what can we change on the page? Like what you can do with mouse over. Okay. Uh, we'll look at the events in a second. So if I look up JavaScript events, you'll notice here's a list of them. And they show how these all work. Here's six common events that you can do. But in addition to that, there's probably uh, another half dozen that are less common. Um, Actually, I lied. There's even more than that. So there's a whole bunch of them. But the main ones on mouse over, on mouse out, on key pressed, or on key up, on key down. You can actually code the difference between when you initially press the key and when you release the key. Um, on click, on load, and so on. It's a whole bunch of, of uh, um, list of events. As far as what we can change on the page, we can change anything that you can set via HTML or CSS. Let's do another example real quick. Let's say I wanted to offer two versions of a page. I'm going to make a high and a low contrast version of the page. Um, really, what's the difference between the two? One might look a little better. The other one might be easier to read. So I'm going to give you the ability to choose which one you want to look at. Do you want to look at the one that probably looks a little bit nicer, or do you want to look at the one that might be a little easier to read? I've seen a lot of webs I've seen websites do things similar to this, or they allow you to apply a theme to something. Um, let me pop some Greek text in here.
I'm going to create two classes. I'm going to set the page initially to be low contrast. So I'm going to give a class equals header, our class equals low contrast. Class equals high contrast, or class equals low contrast for that as well. So I'm going to save this on the desktop. So if we look at this initially, We load the page, and it starts off with that sort of low contrast. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that, in fact, let's, let's do this. Let's change it up a little bit. Color. Background. of a low contrast look. I'm going to make it so that we can change the um, um, page to have a, uh, a, a high contrast look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a button in here. Actually, I'll put a link. I'm just going to set the href to the top of the page, and I'm going to say on click equals write two of these sentences. And set it to high contrast. I'm going to make the text of the link to be set to high contrast.
and then I'll close that link. So I go save this and I click set to high contrast and it sets it to high contrast. So this way you could give your users some sort of way of controlling their preferences on how the page looks. Um, how do I change it back? Well, I just put a link that does the opposite of that and sets the class name to low contrast. That's the second thing we can change about a page. One thing we changed about a page is we made something visible and, in, and invisible. Now we're changing the classes of some of the things on the page. Now if you took this, set it to high contrast, set it to low contrast. So you have a choice of the way that it looks. If you took this and added to this a cookie, which we're not going to talk about in class, I don't think, anyhow. We, we might later on this week, but, or next week. But if we added a cookie to this, then we could allow people to set their preferences so that the next time they came to this page, it would look this way as well. All right? But this is the start of it. Notice how all this works when you separate the content from the way that it looks, by having the HTML have just the content, uh, content and having the CSS controlling everything about the way that it looks, this allows you to do this. All right. Um, you know, we could we could again we could change anything uh, about the page. You know, we could make a a link for making the font size bigger. make the font size twice, twice as big as normal. normal font, and then we could even do a smaller font. You, let's say you got really good eyes and you want to make it so your page doesn't scroll to make bigger and smaller fonts. So set the bigger font, set the normal, set the small. It doesn't work. Ooh, what did I mess up? All right. I think I see it, but let's go through good debugging pro uh, procedures. More tools, developers' tools, console. Fortunately, it doesn't tell me anything here, interestingly enough. Really, what the problem is, is this should be style font size. Now, you don't always put style in front of it, but if it's an aspect of the style, you put style. 
The other thing to note, notice that in CSS, font style is font dash, I'm sorry, font size is font dash size. We don't use dashes when we use JavaScript. So instead of font dash size, we make it font size with the S being capitalized. So if you have a property that has a dash in it, you eliminate the dash and just make the next letter capital. Make bigger font, set to normal, set to smaller. Again, we combine this with a little bit of uh, cookies, and we can we can set the default not just for this page, but for the entire site. We could go in and we could write a little piece of JavaScript that would check as soon as a page loads to see what the user's preference were and set it to that. All right. So again, very powerful thing as far as customizing goes. There's also a way that we could do this on the server side, that when we click this and save it, it's remembered it in a database or something. So there's a few different ways that we could remember how, this, how the user's preference were. We're not necessarily going to study those in this class, but we are going to look at um, ways to, um, um, to, to make those changes. All right. Let's see what else we have. Really what I want to demonstrate now is, again, the linking of an event with a piece of JavaScript, the way the JavaScript refers to things on the page, and finally, how, the way that we can change different properties of the things on the page. Here's kind of a, a fun one. This is an example of doing a menu, similar to what we have on ESPN. Of course, a much simplified menu, but similar enough where you can, I think, see the similarities. Remember on ESPN's page, As we put our mouse over something, it appears. All right. I've actually created menus two different ways. One is this way. One is this way. Now, these menus don't have links to anywhere, but it would be pretty easy to make them links. All right? So let's look at these. These are very simple JavaScript um, code, and they're, they're very similar to the code that we've already seen. It's just stuff is arranged in a different way. So in this case, we have a little, we have four main topics. And there's a plus sign next to them. And typically, when you see a plus sign next to something, that means that it can be clicked on and expanded. So if we click on this, it expands it to the three different areas of CISS. Now again, right now they're not links, but we could make them links easily. All right, And in that way, there'd be a navigation. So let's look at the code for this. All right. What is in the HTML? What's in the HTML is simply a navigation section, a section section, 
And the navigation section is, uh, consists of, of several unordered lists. We have our main ordered list, which is level one. All right? Has a class of level one. In level one, we have our main topics. Computer information system, health services, and so on. But we also have, for each of these, as part of the LI, we have a nested unordered list. So we have a list, and one of the items in the list is another list. All right? So, here's our main list. Here's, our, here's one of our topics. That topic contains, and let's forget about the JavaScript right now, it contains a span that has a plus sign indicating that it can be expanded, computer information system, and then we have another list that has an ID of submenu 1 and a class of level 2. Now let's, and each of these menu items is like that. Whereas we have an LI, and inside that LI we have another unordered list. That ordered list has an ID and it has a class. Notice that the class, level two by default, are not displayed. So when the page initially loads, all the level two menus aren't there. And notice I do this in a little bit different way. Remember in the other example, I said visibility hidden versus display none. The difference between these two is that visibility hidden makes it invisible, but it still sort of takes up the space. Notice in the spoiler example, there's a gap here. What's that gap? Well, the gap is where that paragraph goes. All right. So even though it's not visible, it still takes up the space on the page. With a display of none, it doesn't take up the space. So if we look at this menu, whoops, I mean this menu, these are the four different unordered lists. The nested unordered lists aren't there. All right, they aren't there. They're not even taking up any space. So they don't have a display of hidden. They have a, I'm sorry, they don't have a visibility of hidden. They have a display of none. Now, I wrote something called a function for this. All right. This is sort of the next step in JavaScript. If we looked at our very first example in JavaScript, we have our JavaScript commands just as part of the on mouse over. Really because we only have one simple command. If our mouse goes over this, we want to show the spoiler. All right, that's pretty straightforward. In our other example, our theme example, when we click on the set high contrast, we set the header and the section to high contrast. So we do two things. If you do two things, you can separate them with a semicolon and put them within the same on click or whatever event. Once you start getting more and more complicated instructions, though, it's going to be hard if you list all the instructions that you do right here as part of the HTML. So you create a function. What's a function? A function, simply put, is a list of instructions that we're going to give a name to. All right? And whenever we want to do that list of instructions, instead of writing out each of those instructions, we simply call the function. And the things are going to get done, the things that we define in the function. So let's look at this menu. I have on click of this LI, 
which is computer information system or health systems or whatever, I say handle the submenu. All right? Then I give it what's called an argument. An argument is what we want to do the function to. All right? Let's say we had a function, and there is a function in Excel to calculate the square root. The argument to that function would be what we want to create the square root, what we want to calculate the square root of. So if I said square root and then I put in parentheses 4, that means I want to do the, 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 the um, square root of 4. So I could make an Excel worksheet and do something like that. So if I put in equals SQRT4, I'm calling the square root function. What is the square root function in Excel? Well, built into Excel, there's a whole list of instructions that is used to calculate the square root. What is 4? 4 is the argument. Well, the argument is what we want the square root of. So if I say equal 4, it gives me the right answer there. If I were to say equal 144, it'll give me the answer there. So the instructions work not just for one case, but the instructions work for any case. So any number you give it, it'll give you the square root of. So I can put any old number in here that I want. I just can just hit keys, and it'll tell me what the square root of it is. So functions take arguments, and those arguments are used by the function to do their job and to give you the answer. If I walked up to you and said, what's the square root? You'd look at me and say, what's the square root of what? All right? You have to tell me what number you want the square root of before you can calculate the square root. All right? In functions that you write in JavaScript, it's the same way. I'm saying I want to do something with the submenu. All right? I have to tell the function which submenu I want to do something with. So in the case of if I click on computer information systems, I want to do something to submenu 1, right? I want to do, I want to show or hide this. If I click on this second thing, health services, I want to show or hide submenu 2. So each of my on-click events says handle submenu, which is the name of my function, and I give to that function the value of the thing that I want to do something to. So all four of these, I say handle submenu, here's the submenu I want to do something with. Let's see what the function does. The function has an if statement. What's an if statement? An if statement is like a fork in the road. Right? You have two options. With an if statement, you look, at a, you look at a condition and decide if the condition is true or false. All right? If the condition is true, you do one thing. If the condition is false, you have the option to do something different. So let's look and see what this is. I've defined my function. That's the name of the function. This is, the ver this is where I am placing the argument. So when I call this function and give it submenu1, this arg ID has the value of submenu1. So whenever I say document get element by ID, arg ID, if I call it with submenu1, then the browser is going to substitute submenu1 for that. What I do first off is I see if it's already visible. All right? This is actually what's called a toggle. What's a toggle? It's like an on or off switch. Right? It's either on or off. All right? So 
what I'm doing here is I'm toggling this submenu. I'm making it visible, making it invisible. So there's two choices. If it's already visible and I click it again, I want to make it invisible. If it's invisible and I click it, I want to make it visible. So I go back and forth and make it visible or invisible. So the first thing I do is I look to see is the display for is the display property for that submenu equal to block. So I have an if statement. Now notice that when I compare it to block, I am using a double quote. I'm sorry, not a double quote, a double equal sign. All right. You use an equal sign when you're comparing two values together. All right. Equal signs mean in JavaScript uh, mean two things. Uh, a single equal sign means I want to give this thing this value. It's called an assignment. So I want to assign this value to something. The two equal signs is asking the question, are these two things equal? So assigning versus comparing. So in this case, I look to see if that submenu, if the display property of that submenu is block. What does that mean? It means is it visible? All right, because if the display property is block, is displayed as a block tag and it's visible. So whatever argument I give for the submenu, I look at that submenu and see if the display property equals block. It either is or it isn't. That's the thing with these if statements. It's a fork in the road, but it's a fork in the road that only has two prongs. All right? True or false. So if it's true, if it's already visible, guess what I do? I make it invisible. And that's what this statement says. And notice that there's only a single equal sign here because I'm assigning a value. I'm not asking does it equal none. I'm saying I want to set that value to none. And that will cause it to be invisible. The other thing I do is I want to, I'm going to take the submenu and I'm going to add the word marker to it. And I'm going to use that to find the ID of this little span so that I can change this from a plus to a minus. So if I make it visible, I'm sorry, if I make it invisible, I can now click on it and expand it so it's expandable, so I put a plus sign there. If, however, it was not visible, I'm going to make it visible. And I'm going to set the style, the display style to block, and I'm going to set the marker to a minus, which means I can contract it again. Between now and Wednesday, spend some time taking a look at this and bring your questions to class. Because it's a little tricky, all right? The tricky parts of it are the arguments, just the if statement, and so on. What is the inner HTML property? The inner HTML property is the stuff that is between the start and end tag for that particular ID. We also have another menu, which we saw, whereas we can put our mouse over these things, and really only the first two work. The other two, the CSS is a little off on. That would be a good exercise to go and see if you could figure out what you need to do to correct that. where we go and instead of using a click, we use the on mouse over and on mouse out. And I have two different functions here, one that shows and one that hides. Really, this code is just a vastly simplified version of what we had in the ESPN example. All right. Wednesday, I'll go over these menus some more because I don't expect you to absorb them at first, uh, at first try.
take a look at the code. I'm going to post up to, to Canvas. Um, and we'll do some more fun with JavaScript to change more pieces of the page. Yes? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You would say a href equals something. Like that, yeah. So I just I just put the words because I didn't have all these other pages. So just out of simplicity, I just put those words. But yeah, that's what you do to create the link. All right, that's what I all had for you today. Um, we'll see you up in lab.